Hey, shalom, shalom. First off, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Ruachah Kodash, and Dabalana to the apostles and elders, and elders of Great Millstone who all learned the truth of the gospel of Yahweh Shai from through the Holy Spirit. Honor, salutations, and blessings to the men that are preaching the gospel of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, in all sincerity, diligence, and truth. And peace, grace, and blessings be upon the house of David, which is the elect men, women, and children that are listening and learning. Standing in the Holy Spirit and keeping faith of Yahweh Shai day in and day out. So I uh, just wanted to touch on this article. All right. Uh, I seen this uh, this morning. Okay. I just just got off the plantation. So I um, was able to, you know, go into it. Okay. Uh, basically showing and, you know, seeing the the downfall of Babylon, man. Hey, that's what, <laughs> you know, that's what, that's what really gets our, you know, um, lifts our spirits up. All right, because we're not of this world. All right, we're not from, you know, uh, 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 this this realm. Okay, and anything that pertains to the kingdom of heaven and us knowing the, uh, you know, prophetic events that must take place before that, um, you know, comes to pass. Um, you know, those are the things that, you know, we are to, you know, be uh, focused on. All right, and as uh, men of the Lord. We are our job is to, you know, bring those things out. Actually, uh, let me get a quick, 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 quick scripture. Um, and we you know we're to prophesy about the downfall of this place. OK, and this is what the prophets have been doing from the days of old. All right. Jeremiah chapter 28, verse eight. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. You see? So this is what the jobs of the uh, prophets of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai are to do, you know, until we enter into our rest, which is the kingdom of uh, heaven, which is the kingdom of Israel. Because there, you know, uh, there will be no more prophesying against countries or kingdoms. Because there will only be one kingdom upon the earth, which would be the kingdom of of Israel, all right, headed by Yahweh Shai in the uh, house of David, starting with the 144,000, the governing body, which we hope, you know, to uh, be a part of, all right, and the uh, rest of the uh, one third uh, elect. But in order for that to happen, we understand and know, according to prophecy, that this kingdom, which is uh, the fourth beast, right, or the ten toes, right, Babylon the Great, must uh, go down, all right, and this is what we're seeing. And to the point where, you know, Esau, <laughs> the, uh, the, the keepers of the, the, of the house are seeing it themselves as well. So let's read it. This article is coming from the New York Times. All right. So it, it's it's now in the, the mainstream media. All right. That's how bad this place is going out where the mainstream media, which is supposed to and it still is. But, you know, it's supposed to give you the fluff news, it's supposed to give you everything. You know, uh, uh, in rose colored glasses are now, you know, <laughs> uh, giving it to you uh, raw and uncut because, as the scripture also says, let me pull that as well. Um, uh, where is that at? Habakkuk, Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse um, Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse. 16 it says thou art filled with shame for glory drink thou also and let thy foreskin be uncovered the cup of the lord's right hand shall be turned unto thee and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory all right and nlt it says but soon it will be your turn to be disgraced come and drink and be exposed drink from the cup of yahweh's judgment and all your glory will be turned to shame. And that's exactly what we see happening. So let's read it. It says, good morning. We're covering America's political turmoil, as well as the race for, for House Speaker, student debt, and a new class of MacArthur Fellows. And we're not going to read this whole thing. We're just going to touch on the key points. It says, two viable parties. Imagine if you were a foreign leader surveying the political chaos in the United States. All right now. Look at the dialogue in the in the um, 
the verbiage that is being used. Once again, this is from a mainstream media outlet, the New York Times, right? Political chaos is happening within United States. Okay. And if the the, the head, <laughs> right, that the, these leaders are in a chaotic state, then you then then how much more is it going to, you know, be upon the actual state of, you know, uh, uh, the union, <laughs> right? Because as the scripture says that as as the ruler is, so are, you know, the people. It says, for the first time in history, a party has just fired its own speaker of the House in, in the middle of a term. In the Senate, one of the two parties' leaders, who's 81, has twice frozen in public, unable to speak. <laughs> yep, speaking about Mitch McConnell, right? You know, that that's becoming a, a shameful uh, spewing. The fact that this guy is supposed to be a, a, a head of one of the, you know, of the Democratic Party in the Congress. And he can't even, he, the Lord has got him up there, you know, just looking like a, 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 a damn vegetable, man. And then you got on top of that, the actual president of the United States. I just seen an uh, article in the New York Post um, that former analyst um, Sage Steele, the, 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 the Judite chick, I believe, she said that it was um, it was a uh, hard to basically uh, watch, it, you know, the fact that she was interviewing uh, Joe Biden, Sleepy Joe, and he couldn't even, you know, finish his sentences, his sentences. Now, these are once again, these are the people who are claiming to be the rulers of Babylon or great. But the Lord is just showing you how he just got them, you know, looking uh, uh, foolish, man, straight, straight and you know, straight and uh, an embarrassment. So it says, I'm going to read that last bulletin again. It says, in the Senate, one of the two party leaders who's 80, who's 81 has twice frozen in public, unable to speak. A Supreme Court justice has allowed wealthy political donors to finance a lavish lifestyle for him and his wife. And that same justice wife urged officials to overturn the 2020 presidential election based result based on lies. A likely nominee. And the up upcoming presidential election is facing four criminal trials and regularly speaks in apocalyptic terms about the country's future. Speaking about uh, Trump, you see, you know, he got arrested. He he had a mugshot. Right. He, he's facing, as it says, four criminal uh, uh, trials. But that's the but that's who the the so-called right wants to represent them. See, there is no more. Uh, hey, scriptures tell you, where's your wise men, right? Let me get that as well. Hey, the water, how about you shot to the spirit? Because uh, I had no, had I definitely had no scriptures lined up, but you know, you just trust in the spirit, and, and this is the Lord's doing anyway, right? We're just vessels, so we're just only speaking what He wants to come out. But it's uh, Obadiah chapter 1, verse, um, where is it? Obadiah chapter 1, verse uh, 8, it says, Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of Mount Seir? Okay. And that's exactly what you see uh, going on right now. There's another one in Jeremiah 49, right? Prophesy, prophecy against Edom. And that's what, you know, that's what we are sent to do, right? And Edom, Esau Edom is still on the earth right now. And matter of fact, he is... And the ruler is he's in he's in the ruling seat of the earth, contrary to what, you know, these uh, uh, gainsayers and naysayers like vocab Malone try to uh, push. Right. But no, Esau Edom is the so-called, you know, Caucasian race. And, you know, specifically the tribe of Amalek are the ones who are in, in, in the, you know, the high ruling seat, the Chaldeans of this uh, kingdom. But Esau, Edom collectively are ruling the earth right now. But what is happening? You're seeing his wisdom, as it says here, this is Jeremiah 49, verse 7, concerning Edom, thus saith Yahweh of hosts, is wisdom no more in Teman? Is counsel perished from the prudent? Is their wisdom vanished? Right? Because for a while, Esau was looked at as the, you know, the pinnacle of, of intelligence, right? He was looked at as, you know, the smartest and, and brightest people on the earth, which is, you know, just none but perverse uh, knowledge and, and 
left-handed wisdom. But now he is becoming a laughing stock. Is him, his woman, right? Uh, these these Karens out, <laughs> so-called Karens out here that are just you know making a, 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 a mockery, you know, of of themselves. Okay, getting fired from their jobs left and right because they can't control their outbursts in public. But all in all, what is the Lord doing? He's bringing Esau low in his own kingdom, in his own kingdom. So how much more when he gets into, into our kingdom, how low is he going to get? He's becoming low now in, in his own in his own uh, 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 throne. It says. That nominee is essentially tied in the polls with an 80 year old president who many voters worry is too old to serve a second term, too old and, and, and not cognizant, cognitively, you know, uh, there. If you were an ally of the U.S., you have you'd have to be worried. If you were an enemy, you'd have to be pleased. And what is going to happen to a lot of these allies? According to prophecy, Revelation 17 chapter, they're going to uh, uh, burn her. They're going to end up hating the whore and burning her with fire, eating her flesh and burning her with fire. Meaning what? They're going to. Oh, we can go back to Obadiah. They're going to turn on her. Because they're going to see that hey, this place is done, man. All right, there's there's no more there's no more uh, uh, benefit of being allied with Babylon the Great. Obadiah one verse seven, it says all of. Let me start at six. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? Okay, and how was those things sought up through the Spirit, through the Lord, uh, uh, bringing out the prophets, as it says in Second Thessalonians. Right. Then shall that wicked be revealed. Right. The man of sin is son of perdition. All of the things that Esau prided himself on being, you know, uh, uh, the reason why he is he has the greatest kingdom and all these things. It's all being found out to be none but lies, robbery, deceit. OK. Pseudoscience, falsehoods. All right. And, 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 and witchcraft. OK. Everything that Esau tried to present as something that is good. Now is being shown that it was nothing but death. Okay, <laughs> it says all of the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Okay, none understanding in him. Let's re keep reading. It says too many watching at home and abroad, the American way no longer seems to offer a case study in effective representative representative de uh, democracy. Peter Baker of the Times write. See, <laughs> Instead, it has become an example of disarray and discord, one that rewards extremism, challenge norms and threatens to divide a polarized country even further. And ultimately, this is what this devil wants, because once again, chaos, order out of chaos, right? Because he 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 can't, you know, deal uprightly, all right? He thinks he's setting these traps, setting these snares. But as the scripture says, he's going to fall into the own into his own trap. It's going to fall upon his own head. OK. And what is being seen is the fact that. The way that he rules is is unsustainable. Actually, let's pull that up now. I mentioned it before, but let's pull it up in the book of Second Ezra. Oh, not Second Ezra. Uh, Sirach or Ecclesiastes 10, verse 1. A wise judge will instruct his people in the government of a prudent man is well ordered. Are these words? These are the complete opposite of what world order is. Disarray, discord, chaos, polarized, right? Stay in house divided. That's not well ordered, right? It says, as the judge of the people is himself perverse, disarray, disorderly, rebellious, okay? So are his officers. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. An unwise king. Is there any more wisdom in Teman? No, there isn't. An unwise king destroyeth his people. And that is exactly what you're seeing. And that's why ultimately 
what you're going to what's about to end up happening is this is going to just keep brewing brewing to a, to the pot boils over and then you're going to get anarchy in the streets and you're going to get civil unrest and right and people are are at the brink of that man that's why you see every time you know every every couple months as it seems now it seems like every couple weeks but it's it seems you know every 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 other uh uh week or two weeks or three weeks or whatever you got some type of riot or uproar or looting all right or smash and grab okay or some some type of uh um mass shooting and that's ultimately become because of why because there's an error that proceeded from the ruler because you have an unwise king ruling and it does what it destroys the people but through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. And that's going to ultimately happen when Yahweh Shai, the king of kings and lord of lords, comes and returns and takes what is rightfully his, which is the earth and all that be therein. All right. And set up, Lord willing, us as joint heirs to rule over the nations. That is what the gospel is. That is what the kingdom is. That is how you is uh, peace is going to be established on upon the earth because we're going to rule in righteousness with a rod of iron. Meaning what is going to be a very severe and strict rulership. There will be no uh, leeway or freedom to do evil. OK, because as we see in Esau's kingdom, you have freedom to do wickedness. You have freedom to do whatever you want. And then what has it done? It's destroyed the minds, the the food, the air quality, the the the, the atmosphere. All right, the, everything, everything is destroyed in this place, man. It says to um, I read that. It says many factors have contributed to this turmoil. Decades of stagnant stagnant living standards have caused voter frustration. Social media, along with the rise of a cable television network willing to promote falsehoods, has inflamed discourse. The decline of institutions, churches, labor unions, once dominated, once dominant local employers have left Americans feeling unmoored. And aging political leaders have failed to groom strong successors. And see, that's something that you ain't going to have to worry about in the kingdom because the leaders, the rulers of the kingdom, they're going to be immortals. Okay, we are going to be immortals. We ain't going to age. We're going to be young and forever. Okay. It says, but the single largest source of the chaos is the Republican Party. Now, he goes into a, a rant about the, the Republican Party, but it ain't just the Republican Party. It's it's Esau. It's Esau's party, period. All right. It don't matter what side of the, the political uh, uh, atmosphere you're on. Esau, as the scripture says, uh, uh, two horns as a lamb, but spake as a dragon. Right, it's the it's the 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 beast itself that is problematic, and that is who the Lord is coming to take out and destroy. All right, so um, yeah, pretty much that's that's pretty much what I wanted to read. On top of that, like I said, he goes into the um why the Republican Party is the issue and the Democratic all that. It's a bunch of bunch of BS. But I wanted to pull out this also because as you just seen, you know, that that uh, uh editor, you know, write that. Now you have here, it says man, this is come from from the Washington Post. So you have the New York Times and you have the Washington Post. Man with gun demands to see Wisconsin governor is arrested and returns with rifle. So because of this political chaos, because there's no more uh, because the, the the rulers are destroying the people, what are people doing? They're rising up, right? There's as the scripture says that when you start to see uproars, let's pull it up. Second Ezra nine, verse one. He answered me then and said, "Measure thou the time diligently in itself." And how do we measure the time diligently? By doing what we're doing, by watching, right? Understanding the prophecies. OK, and in order to understand the prophecies, as it says in Sirach, the 39th chapter, you got to give your mind into it. This is what you got. You got to be uh, uh, your spirit got to be, uh, um, you know, in love with. OK. You, you can't be distracted 
by the uh, affairs of this world. As Paul said, don't be entangled by the affairs of this, of this world. All right. A good soldier will not be entangled. All right. And in order and when you're not entangled with the affairs of this world and you're focused on a mission. Right. Then you will be able to measure the time diligently. And it says, and when thou seest part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before. And that's how do we see parts of the sign pass? By once again, watching what the Lord is doing, seeing how the day after day, all these things that the Lord told us was going to happen before he returned, taking place. Then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time. Okay, that's very key. The very same time, because as Yahweh Shah said, this generation shall not pass till all be fulfilled. And that's why you're seeing it day after day. Just more and more uh, uh, calamities coming to pass. More and more evils. More and more sorrows are being brought you know, upon this place. Why? Because it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. And when would the Lord visit the world? See, when the Lord visits this world, this world of, you know, this heathenistic rulership world, that's the end of it. You think the Lord is coming to visit the world and seeing all, uh, uh, you know, seeing this wickedness, you know, being pushed. And he's just going to be like, oh, OK, I just want to, you know, to make a quick stop and check it, check it out. Nah, when he visits it, he going to end it. So therefore, if he ends it, who's going who is going to be in rulership based off of. When it is ended. Let's get that. Second Ezra 6 verse 9. For Esau is the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Why? Because the last ruling heathen will be Esau. And when the Lord comes and visits the world. He's going to see Esau whom he hates. Right? According to Malachi the fourth chapter. Ruling. Right? And the ruling ship, the rulership is, is going to be so perverse, so evil, so wicked that the Lord is going to be infuriated and burn it, burn his kingdom up. Send his son back to establish his order and to deliver his children, his elect that are in this place that are signing, crying, crying for the abominations that are being done in the midst thereof. OK, and the fact that we're crying out to the Lord. As it says in uh, 2nd Edge 16th chapter, he says what? That he will hold his tongue no more, right? Concerning their cries, right? Uh, let me put, let me see, get it correctly. 2nd Edge 15 verse uh, 7, therefore saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things. And that's why you see in this place go down how it's going down. In which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent, <clears throat> innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. And how are we innocent? How are we righteous? Where well, scripture says that the just, the righteous shall live by his faith. And what, what faith do we have? We have faith in the blood of Yahawashat. And that is how we are made innocent. That is how we are made pure. All right? So the fact that we're crying unto the Lord. Through the name of Yahushai, those prayers are being reached into heaven. And that blood that Yahushai sacrificed is allowing us a, uh, a, an audience to, with the ear of the, of the highest, of the Heavenly Father. And the fact that we're complaining continually by Hashem, Yahushai, right? In the name of Yahushai, Yahweh is hearing that. He's hearing it constantly. And what does he say? And therefore, saith the Lord, I will surely avenge them. And receive unto me all of the innocent blood from among them. Okay? And that's why the scripture says, give him no rest. And every time we use that name, Yahawashai, and we're crying unto the Lord and we're complaining continually, those are those are being, uh, being presented unto the Father, man. And he said what? He will surely avenge us. So let's go back to 2nd Ezra, the ninth chapter. And therefore, when there should be seen earthquakes... And uproars of the people in the world. The earth is the earth is definitely quaking in various places. Okay, then shalt thou well understand that that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like all that is made in the world hath an end, a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. 
All right. And the end is definitely manifest. So it says a man with a handgun showed up at the Wisconsin Capitol demanding to see Governor Tony Evers on Wednesday was arrested, posted bail, returned with a rifle and was taken into protective custody, according to police. <laughs> so what is this? What should this remind you or prophecy should this remind you of? Second Edger, chapter 15, verse um, 15, 14. Woe unto the world and them that dwell therein. For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hands. Right? Civil unrest. Okay? Uh, you're going to have it social class wars, right? Political wars, race wars. Okay? The fact that people are going to be fighting over food because there's going to be famines. There's going to be multiple different facets uh, of war that is going to be happening within Babylon. And on top of that, you're going to have this world war that is continuously brewing up, right? Russia, China, Iran, North Korea, and so on and so forth. Hey, I just seen that uh, America just shot down a Turkish uh, drone, right? And Turkey is a part of the NATO, a part of NATO. But according to prophecy, Turkey's going to ban with Russia, <laughs> and 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 we can already we already see how. The Tur Turkey uh, president is, you know, uh, allied to, Pru uh, to Putin. So, hey, everything that the Lord said was going to take place is taking place, man. And nothing can stop that. It says, um, for there should be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. And that's what you see happening, you know, uh, to the to the point where you got men. You got civilians that are coming after the, 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 the actual political leaders, man. Senators, mayors, governors, right? <laughs> it's going to be presidents. It's going to be, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get crazy out here. And it's all because what? The Lord is judging Babylon the Great and Esau, Esau Edom. So let's get this last scripture because like I said, hey. This is a uh, this is beautiful for us to see, man, for our eyes and ears. If you are in tune with the Holy Spirit, you are you should be rejoicing at the at this. OK, because this only signifies what that our salvation is near. All right. So, uh, Ecclesiastes 25, verse seven. There be nine things which I have judged in my heart to be happy. And the tenth will I utter with my tongue a man that have joy of his children and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. Okay? And that and that we're going to get both of those things, man. All right? But but you know, pertaining to this lesson, we're we are living to see the fall of our enemy. And Lord willing we get to, you know, it be the Lord's will that we don't taste death until we see the complete destruction of Babylon and the return of Yahweh Shah. But we know Right. Even right now, you know, if it was a Lord will for us to, you know, die to die tomorrow, at least we die knowing that this place is going down. Right. But, you know, I personally want to see the, the complete end of Babylon the Great. All right. And so, you know, with that, Lord willing, this was edifying unto the elect, giving all praises, honor and glory to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakakwadash. Till next time, Shalom.